श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षा परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम द फर्स्ट स्टेप विच इज टू बी टेकन विदाउट एनी एक्सेप्शन और ऑप्शन ऑन द स्पिरिचुअल पाथ is to discard body identification if this is not done we are simply wasting our opportunity as a human being to discover the truth therefore all the practices which are told whether it is karma yoga bhakti or jnanam all of them are aimed at only one thing to tell us we are someone other than the body see like in case of karma we are told all the problems that we have because of our bad karma in the last life and in this life also we continue to do bad karma so in the next life also we will suffer means what we are someone living in this body and apart from other than the body it is for this purpose karma siddhanta is there not to send us to hell or heaven the second thing when we existed even before this body was born in another body so we were never born nor do we ever die this is the second in principle third principle we are all expert in blaming others for our miseries and as a result we become extrovert so the parents try to improve the children the husband tries to improve the wife the wife tries to improve the husband and this has never happened till date therefore we have to be responsible 100% for everything that happens in our life and therefore this siddhanta of karma the principle of karma is told to so get rid of this body identification enough is enough then the second thing comes the biggest obstacle is that of being a soul one in each body okay. till such time we imagine that there is one soul per body we have not understood the basics of spiritual life to understand this we don't have to do anything see the real spiritual life is not doing something but undoing of what we have been doing till date it is not becoming someone it is unbecoming and therefore if we have become somebody because of something we have to drop it so what we have become we have become mother father brother sister husband wife very good and who is miserable who is disturbed in this world these fellows now find out where from they have come so we come to know all these second generation 2g they are born after body identification and when there is no body identification as in deep sleep where are all these people they are nowhere because they were never there so these non existing entities they are miserable how can you help them when they are not existing our struggle is like i was standing near a lake 
still waters no disturbance and um, full moon was reflected in the waters and it was so beautiful but some small dry leaf fell in the waters and the ripple started when the ripple started that reflection of the moon it started breaking into pieces and i got so disturbed oh god such a beautiful moon is breaking into pieces so i tried to collect the moon reflection from the waters so that it should not be broken is it ever possible see friends our whole life is this foolish trouble a uh, struggle therefore friends instead of struggling chitta vritti nirodaha to find out to whom the chitta vritti is coming see then we will come to know the chitta vritti the thoughts come to mr somebody we are all disturbed as somebody as mother father brother sister husband wife we are disturbed as that and who are they they are nowhere see friends then what is this jiva principle told in the scriptures they have told but we have to further inquire what do you mean by jiva what do we mean by soul see take this simple example day to day electrical energy expressing through the bulb as light now there are n number of bulbs agreed but are there n number of lights inside light is only one bulbs are many exactly the same way bodies may be many but the life is one life is not separate see friends therefore if the bulb becomes fuse will we say the light from the bulb has come out in search of another bulb to enter no but this has gone so deep in our system last life this life next life prarabdha karma sanchit karma agami karma ram ram and whole life is spent only in that see friends we have to know the purpose when something is said what is the moral of the story see so this body identification is dropped by the practice of yoga abhyas so when we practice yama niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi they are meant for getting rid of this body identification so yesterday we have seen how this asana can help us get out of body identification and unless we are convinced of this that the embodied is someone different from the body we will not be able to proceed further on the spiritual path spiritual journey so we do asana pranayam yama niyama pratyahar ahar means to eat pratyahar means not to eat so the next spiritual practice according to yoga he is pratyahar pratyahar doesn't mean because you are suffering from diabetes you are avoiding sugar that is not pratyahar pratyahar means all the indulgent objects are freely available like we have got here nice dinner and lunch freely available but do we have control over ourselves is it that we are eating because it is available or it is taken because it is necessary yukta har viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapna vabodhasya yogo bhavati dukkah this yoga becomes the removal of miseries only if we are able to maintain perfect balance in everything ahar vihar how much to eat how much not to eat extremism is very easy 
not to eat at all for 21 days in a big pendal. Maharaj Ji, you are not eating for last 21 days. How come you are so fat till? No, because I eat at night. I said 21 days, but night I eat. Whom are we cheating? And suppose you don't eat 21 days. So what? Is it an achievement? See friends, or the other one is keeping on eating. That is not the way. Keep the life going. So Pratyahara is perfect balance in involvement in the world and withdrawal from the world. See, after this is done, then we have closed the world and the doors by which the world enters us. Yama, Niyama, Asan, Pranayam. This is external spiritual practice. Pratyahar is closing all the windows through which the world enters our system. Now we start working on the mind. Be very attentive. We only say Chitta Vritti Nirodaha Yogaha, but how do we attain it? Bhagwan Patanjali says these three principles Dharana Dhyan Samadhi. Normally, we complain about the mind. Whenever I sit for meditation, you know, there are too many thoughts coming. What should I do? One gentleman I met on Singapore airport, there was some time, maybe two hours for my next flight. So I was sitting somewhere and watching the whole tamasha. One person from nowhere dropped in and said to me, uh, excuse me, do you deal in meditation? So I told him, no retail. It's only wholesale I deal. No, 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 not that way. I want to um, tell you, I am doing meditation for last 30 years. I say, it's your problem, not my problem. No, only one difficulty I have got. I kept quiet. My difficulty is, he said, mind runs here and there whenever I sit for meditation. What should I do? I said, don't do meditation. Relax. What is important? Sitting and suffering or celebrating life. What is important? No, but everybody tells you should do meditation, then suffer silently. Stop this idea that meditation is done. Stop this idea that we can control the mind. See friends, there are two things about the mind's control. Then I'll come to Patanjali's approach so that we can get rid of this uh, notion that there is one soul per body. See, about the mind, when we say I am disturbed, find out what is a disturbance. Disturbance is entry of a foreign body in the mind in the form of importance or value. See, like we are here in this beautiful place. Suppose something happens somewhere in uh, Botswana, one accident happens and a child is crushed. Will it make any difference to us? No. Because we don't give value to that. And in this very hall, if somebody falls and breaks his leg, then oh God, how it happened? Because we have given importance. Therefore, be attentive. The world enters us and creates disturbances because we have given importance to the world. This is how people start smoking. Nobody is born with a cigarette in the mouth and a lighter in the hand. Then this youngster looks around and sees a big billboard. On that billboard, he sees a person sitting on a motorcycle and a useless girl is sitting behind him. 
and there is the cigarette in his mouth and from back side she puts the lighter and lights the lamp or the cigarette and this is another useless fellow looking at oh god it is so beautiful i think that boy is me only what is lacking is one girl sitting behind and slowly the cigarette becomes important and we start smoking first cigarette with zero experience second cigarette with one experience third cigarette with two experiences nth cigarette with n minus 1 experiences and when n minus 1 approaches the n in infinity they are equal thereafter we cannot live without smoking where from this has come because we have given importance to the smoking exactly the same way anything you give value that will trouble you give value to perfection you will be perfectly miserable give value to discipline you will be extremely miserable give value to cleanliness you will be seeing only dust and dirt everywhere give value to food wherever you go you will have only food in your head not anything else see friends therefore if we have given value to something or somebody it is our responsibility that we devalue that what is important to know oneself or to improve the world this world has always been like this there is nothing new in this world see friends many people have got this funny notion under the disguise of spirituality the social work social work is not spiritual life please one day one person asked me this question swami ji when your krishna is going to take avatar i said he told me there is no hurry he said the world is so terrible when is going to come when is going to improve this world it is so bad so i ask him was it not very bad before i don't think it was bad this bad very good will it not be worse afterwards it cannot be worse than this swami ji very good earlier you were there no later you will be there no now the world is terribly bad because you are there you change the world is beautiful see friends spiritual life is focusing your attention on your own being see friends therefore control over the mind means pratyahar means do not give value to anything in this world good or bad your mind will remain at peace see and the peace of the mind will be like what not an artificial um, peace or artificial happiness you must have seen this uh, laughing club people this laughing club people have got artificial laughter not original this i experience i was in bhopal the other day i was talking somewhere morning right outside my house there was a beautiful garden so i used to go for a walk in the morning and there is to be about a dozen oldies in their whole life they have never even smiled forget about laughing and late in life they came to realize i think we should laugh sometime at least once in a while but they never laughed how to laugh so they joined a club to learn how to laugh can there be more tragedy than this and then they will be standing in a circle and then they'll clap and it's a disciplined laughing when you think you cannot laugh when you laugh you don't think how simple it is so they stood all around ha ah, now we will laugh i will clap three times then you should say ha 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 okay we'll do it three times ready 
So everybody is ready to laugh. <clears throat> is it a military drill or what? By the left, quick march. Dumb people. And then they started. Tack, tack, tack. Ha, ha, ha. Tack. Ram, 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 ram. Is this happiness? See? They have never laughed in their life. Carrying the burden of the whole world. Imagine Hercules carrying the globe on his head with a smile on his face. A person who carries the burden can never be happy. Take three examples. First example, if a small boy, 10, 12 years, carrying the burden of three NRI suitcases on his head and getting down the staircase of a railway bridge, that time you stop him and tell him a joke. Will he laugh? Because having such a heavy load on his head. The second thing. This is a physical burden. The second thing is a physiological burden. Like you must have seen people when they sit in a big gathering like this. Suppose somebody has got high BP. BP means bladder pressure. So if he has got a very high BP, will he be able to enjoy what is going on? He is simply waiting till the limit is reached. And when the limit is reached, he will kick everybody, go outside and Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate. He cannot carry that burden and be happy. The third burden, the worst kind of burden is carrying the burden of our total past. See friends, oldies like me, they never live in the present. All the time, when we were children, who cares? We don't understand. Nobody is interested in our past. The younger generation is interested in their future. Oldies have no future. They are just waiting to die and yet not dying. They are also frustration. See, friends. Therefore, control over mind cannot happen just like that. Unburden yourself. So what is to be done for controlling the mind? Number one, observe this. Whenever we talk to anybody, we talk about our past. See, I was there, I went there, I did this. Nobody is interested. But we keep on talking. That is what we have. I was in recently Badrinath and there were about few people around me. So in morning time, I was sitting in a chair and having a cup of tea. And some people were standing somewhere sitting. One person came from nowhere. He pushed everybody. He said, Swamiji, how come you are here? I am your fan. You know, I got three children. Two are in USA, one is in UK. And they are doing very well. But I am in a hurry, okay? I am sorry. And went away. I didn't ask you who you are. Why you have come? See, friends, if you really want to walk spiritual life, try this principle. Do not talk about your past. And do not ask anybody about their past. You will start remaining in the utter present then you don't have to control the mind. See? You will be relaxed. Now do this experiment. I will ask a question and don't answer because answer is common for all. 269 days before, what did you eat for your breakfast? Oh God! 269 days. Are you not struggling? Whenever you go away from the present, struggle begins. After 59 days, at 6 o'clock in the morning, 
where you will be sitting you know in short whenever we go away from the present either in the past or in the future tensions are bound to be and a tense person cannot be happy see how simple it is therefore try this never ask anybody about their past never tell about your past if somebody ask you bluff like many people ask me so i mean first thing swami means he must have a ashram a default settings so they will be asking uh, swami ji where from you are so i keep quiet i have got a habit of talking in hindi हमारे पंजाब की बात है इन अवर पंजाब सो वी ने से इन अवर पंजाब देन देर इज अ पर्सन फ्रॉम पंजाब दैट लेडी कम्स एंड शी आस्क मी स्वामी जी तुम पंजाबी हो यू आर ए पंजाबी सो आई सी यस वेयर फ्रॉम यू आर द होल इंक्वायरी बिगिन्स नाउ आई आस्क हर ममा वेयर फ्रॉम यू आर वी आर फ्रॉम अमृतसर देन आई से आई एम फ्रॉम जल अंदर जल के अंदर Sometimes I say in our Maharashtra, they immediately another ikre di ikre gum chenas. Swami ji, you are a Maratha. Yes. Where from you are? Again the same dumb question. So I ask, where from you are? I am from Solapur. I am from Kolhapur. Ram Ram Ram. And one day I was caught because I am expert in giving bluffs. I was caught. That lady says, Swami ji. you are telling lies sometime you say you are from punjab now you say you are from maratha what is the truth i the truth is i am a paratha baap punjabi ma maratha mai paratha e friends don't get lost in your past don't bring your past in the present that is the highest sin you know it is something like this some guest comes to your house he has come and you say okay please sit down you go out again and you see for somebody again you come in say hey everything is okay again you go out in short you are directly disrespecting his presence because you are interested either in the past or the future is it not an insult to the person who has come in presence of you see friends in the same manner when we refuse to remain in the present we are the highest sinner and a sinner must get punishment that punishment is miserable existence try i am not giving you a mala in your hand i am not telling you do pranayam i am not telling you do shirshasan and suffer see just simple thing don't talk about your past don't ask anybody about their past then what should we talk talk about government which doesn't exist talk about weather which is never stable see all general things which doesn't create any sin and merit slowly your mind will start remaining quiet without much efforts first spiritual practice then the second thing comes observe this we all keep on talking 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 to ourselves see mauna silence is the discipline of mind it is not the discipline of speech if you study bhagavad gita bhagwan sri krishna says mana prasada saumyatvam maunam atma vinigraha this is the discipline of mind mana prasada always cheerful and happy living at zero complaint level mana prasad saumyatvam always cool maunam not talking to oneself normally you must have seen when the people observe mauna they don't talk to others but they have got paper and pencil in their hand 
So the speech is on a casual leave. So additional job is given to the hand to do the work. Because speech is also a karmendriya, hand is also a karmendriya. See friends, I tell you one experience. This happened in Haridwar. I was coming from somewhere. So my friend told me, we are going by a manual rickshaw. He says, Swamiji, in this ashram there is a big Mahatma. Should we take darshan? I said, yes, we'll go. We left the rickshaw and me and my friend went to that ashram to take darshan of the Mahatma. So the secretary was there. Wherever a Mahatma is associated with the secretary, beware. So secretary said, no, 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 you can't see Mahatma ji. He is observing Mauna. I said, all right, don't scold us. We are not coming to complain. So we went out. After two, three minutes, we must have hardly gone hundred steps. Again he came running. Wait, 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 wait. I said, what happened now? Mahatma ji has called you. I said, how can you call me? He is in Maunam. He said, don't argue, come. I said, all right, we went. So me and my friend, we are going. He told to my, you can't go inside. I said, you, you enjoy, I am going to suffer. Go there. And I went inside. Mahatma ji was sitting on a huge chair, huge size. And one plastic chair was kept for me because I am a plastic Mahatma. See? And then he took the paper and pen. He wrote, what is your name? He gave it to me. So I wrote, Gadbadananda. <laughs> then after that he wrote, uh, where from you have come? So I had to write something. So I wrote, Vrindavan. Then he again wrote, third question. Where are you staying in Haridwar? So I wrote something. And it was going on and then I realized, Hare, come on, I can talk. I am not observing Mauna. And when I realized I can talk, that Mahatma also realized that I can talk but I am writing. And therefore I also laughed, he also laughed very loudly. So when he laughed, then I asked him a question. Sir, laughing is allowed in Mauna? Friends, these are the cartoons of spiritual life. This is not spirituality. Manaprasada, saumyatvam, maunam, atma vinigraha. Atma vinigraha is the ability to start and the ability to stop in a fraction of moment. That freedom is called as atma vinigraha. See, friends, Therefore, these two things, when we talk to others, we bring the past load. When we talk to ourselves, we always talk to ourselves about the future. What I am going to do? And we keep on asking questions. We keep on replying them. Once I was coming from um, Australia to New Zealand, Auckland. And in that uh, Auckland, there was one passenger and he had a very rough dealing with the immigration office officer. And there was a tension. The police came and security came and the whole hall was tense. So my friend was with me. He said, Swamiji, you have got all the papers. My visa, my uh, passport is, you know, this uh, Australian. I have no problem. Yours is the Indian passport. Keep all the paper ready. Let us pray to the Lord. We should not go to that immigration officer. He is already angry. He will do something to you. And he was so excited, frustrated. I said, come on, man. Ru uh, relax, relax. Nothing is going to happen. No, no, you don't know. Oh, he was high BP. And he was holding my hand so much that my blood circulation stopped. <laughs> and as God wanted, we were directed to that immigration officer, go there. And he was perspiring. And when we went there, I gave my passport, he opened, without even seeing anything, he just stamped, go. I said, hey, what happened? I, I was so tense. We always talk, to ourselves about the future. Now see this simple spiritual practice. Stop talking to others about your past. And stop talking to yourself 
about the future? Where will you remain? In the present. Now when should we start this practice of not talking to ourselves? Right from the morning, when you land on the commode, from there you start. See? Give it a try. Yesterday we tried. Don't talk to yourself. In this there is no struggle. Like we come out of the house after putting the clothes on, in the same manner, thoughts come out of the mind by putting the clothes of words. Chitta Vritti Nirodha can never happen unless you understand this basic principle. Thoughts cannot express without words. We simply say Chitta Vritti Nirodha, what is that? Try this. When these two things are consciously practiced, and don't do it for hours together. Every time, five minutes. Do it ten times in a day, except while driving. See, try. Only five minutes are enough. Slowly, we will develop a stamina that without efforts, our mind remains non-reactionary like the mirror. Mirror reflects everything, rejects nothing, at the same time retains nothing. That mind which is fully available, dynamically performing in this world, yet not getting scratches and dents, because it is no more reacting in the world. When such a mind is cultivated, then in that mind the inquiry kindles as to who am I? What is this world? Who is God? What is spiritual practice? And when this inquiry kindles, then understand God's grace is showering in full glow. See, friends, therefore, it is for this purpose, Patanjali Maharshi tells, Dharana Dhyan Samadhi. Simply complaining about the mind is not the solution. See, so when we want to control the mind, we must know what is the meaning of uncontrolled mind. So when we say the mind is disturbed, explain the disturbances of your mind. The will come to know that behind every disturbance there is somebody sitting. We are all disturbed as mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, etc. And when we are nobody, no disturbances. So what should be the first step in controlling the mind? Start remaining as Mr. Nobody. And who is nobody? He who doesn't have the past. Somebody is a mule carrying the burden of the past. See, friends. Once in a management conference, I was conducting one experiment. Management is, is a myth. Mismanagement is, is the truth. So, in that conference, we wanted to have some different approach. So we said it will be a non-traditional management conference. After our lectures are over, then evening the whole family should come. All were invited. The parents, the grandparents, children and these necktie brand people, everybody was invited. So evening, one day we had this experiment. I said, hey, today we will play something. All age groups. Grandchildren, uh, parents and grandparents, gents, ladies, everyone. 
big group. I said, let us play, okay? Then I said, to one child, about five years. I said, hey, you come here. So he came. I said, stand near the mic, he stood. I said, now talk about yourself, whatever you want to talk. Or anything you talk, we will not object. For five minutes you have to talk. Now he was thinking, uh, I, what should I talk? I said, anything, no problem. With a great difficulty, he said, mm, I like chocolates. Again blank. No, what to talk, what to talk, what to talk. I don't like taking bath in the morning. Again quiet. And finally he said, ah, I can't talk further, that is all. I said, no, three minutes, you have to still stand here. You have finished only two minutes. Stand only without talking. He said, no, I want to go. I said, no, you cannot go. He said, if you don't allow me to go, I will piss here. I said, then you please go. His lecture was over. Then the second experiment, I called 78 not out. Oldie. And the old came. I said, sir, talk for five minutes. Whatever you want to talk. And he started. I was here, I had done this, I had done that, this happened, that has happened, and I was like that, I was like that. Non-stop, five minutes over. I said, sir, five minutes over. He said, no, I have just started. I said, enough is enough. No, I want to talk. I said, I'll call security. <laughs> See, friends, the child has nothing to talk because hardly there is any past. And therefore, children don't have a strong ego. Oldies have a long past. Therefore, there are many things to talk. And any small little thing is told to them, they get insulted or honored. That is what is called as ego. Ego is a mule carrying the burden of total past. And this total past, we keep on irrigating it. We keep on pruning it. We keep on protecting it. And we make an album. Like Al-Qaeda, we make an album out of it. <laughs> Friends, live in the utter present. So, Patanjali says, control of the mind means what? First, no control of the mind means there is somebody... So first of all, get rid of this somebody. Then start working on the mind. Mind is disturbed means mind runs in places, mind runs in time, mind runs in objects or people. This running of the mind in desha kala vastu, in time, space and object is called as a disturbed mind. So if we have to control the mind, what it should mean? Mind should not be allowed to move from one place to another place. Mind should not be allowed to move from one theme to another theme. Mind should not be allowed to move from theme and place for a longer period of time, allowed to stay in one time. These three together is called as Dharana Dhyan Samadhi. <coughs> control of mind with reference to the place Deshabandha is Dharana. So when we are sitting, that time it is natural for us to bring the mind at the spiritual heart. Unknowingly we all know this. When I had to say, I am telling you, that time where our finger goes, does it go to the back? I am telling you. Do we say, I am telling you? No, I am telling you. I is sitting here in the spiritual heart. It is not the bloody heart I am talking about, the spiritual heart. Where the notion of I begins. See, friends. So, when you are sitting, just bring your mind in this one place and with a firm resolution, not going anywhere.
we have controlled the mind one third. Then second thing, the mind runs from object to object. One moment it is thinking, thinking about taking bath, next time it is thinking about putting the dress, the third time they are taking the car out. So many things. The frequency of thoughts per second is so high. So we give a discipline to the mind. Now, in one place, dharana, in one object, dhyana, keep one living object. Don't take a dead object. So, you put in your heart, Bhagwan Sri Krishna, he is standing with a smile in, on his lips. He is alive, not a statue. His eyes blink. His breathing can be felt. His yellow cloth is so beautiful. So, mind is brought to one place on one object. So, dharana, dhyan. Samadhi is with reference to time. So, the mind is brought in one place on one object for a longer period of time. So, we sit quiet, brought the mind to the spiritual heart. Bhagwan Sri Krishna is there. And the mind doesn't run here and there. Be very attentive. Moving consciousness is mind and non-moving mind is consciousness. Solidified water is ice. Liquefied ice is water. They are not different. Mind is that knowledge where Objectivity is prominent. Consciousness is that knowledge where objectivity is absent. Now you are seeing me as an object of knowledge. You know you are. So when we know anything as other than I, it is functioning at the level of mind. And when the objectivity disappears, objectless awareness, in the words of J. Krishnamurti, In this, I, the soul, dissolves. There are no efforts. Some seekers come across some problems, although there are no efforts. And the problem is, 
when their mind is slowly dropping the objectivity the mind goes to sleep they are unable to maintain a thought free mind because we have made, we have been practicing two extremes multi thought mind or no thought mind see multi thought mind is disturbed mind no thought mind is sleep but there is in between state when there are no thoughts but there is no sleep that is called as freedom from thoughts freedom th thoughts means what thoughts may be there may not be there who cares and such people who are not able to hold you must have seen when they sit for meditation in now and then they will have one small quick nap like this and on this also the people ask the question so i mean what is this some people when they sit for meditation they do like this thing they do what is that i said that is called as jhatka meditation is because the mind is either going to sleep or getting identified with the body when the mind is identified with the body thoughts will start coming when the mind goes into sleep you will start dozing off mind is neither allowed to sleep nor allowed to identify with the body then consciousness expresses through the body and no more lives as the body consciousness expresses through the mind and no more lives as the mind this is how the spiritual practice is working on the mind and when we the start working on the mind then a real inquiry kindles in our heart when we talk about jiva or the soul when we talk about last life this life next life when we talk about karma what is this all mess see friends then the inquiry kindles if karma and upasana does not lead to inquiry about the truth we were leading our life mechanically see karmani chitta shuddhyartham bhagwan sri krishna says in bhagavad gita yoginah karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddha the purpose of the yogis to do the karma is not to achieve something in the outer world but for the purification of the mind and the purification of the mind is that mind which is no more a problem for us our mind is the biggest problem for us because we have never worked on our mind therefore friends when we are functioning in this world we have to be consciously aware that before we take up any job during the execution of the job and after the job is over the quality of the mind is immaculate perfect pure this is more important than anything in this world see friends then it is called as the real karma yoga karma yoga is not cleaning the you know toilets here and there that is not karma yoga karma yogi is you are expressing happiness in and through every action of your life that is karma yoga it doesn't matter what you do what matters is how you do it is karma a channel to express happiness or is it a suffering that we are going through this way when we cultivate this habit that we express only happiness in our life through action happiness is expressed through words happiness is expressed when a person speaks happily he cannot be bitter see i'll tell you one experience many years before 
Swamiji, you tell us that don't talk about the past, but you always talk about the past. Yes, your question is right. When we learn from our experiences, those experiences do not create a burden of impressions on the mind. And when we do not learn from our experiences, we repeat the same mistake again and suffer silently. Therefore, take this experience. Many years before, I was pretty young that time. I was staying in Calcutta in somebody's house and we were having a common host. So two of us, one was me, other was very elderly man. 78 or so or maybe 80 and he asked me uh, my dear son what do you do I said I talk on Gita he said do you think that you are talking on Gita changing the people I said no I don't think that way then why you are talking I said for getting food but don't you feel bad the people don't change I said no I feel good they should not change if they become wise, where will I go? See, you know the prayer of the doctors? The prayer of the doctors is Sarve Bhavantu Roginaha. When everybody is unhealthy, then the doctor is healthy. I said, in the same manner, we are the same type. When all of you are ignorant, then our market is maintained. So I am not feeling bad. People don't change, don't learn from my talk. Let them maintain their level of foolishness. I am happy about it. He said, you are a very peculiar person. I said, this is manufacturer's defect. I am like that. <laughs> then, out of courtesy, I had to ask him, Sir, uh, I am sorry, I don't know about you. You must be a big person, but I do not know. If you want to make any old person happy, Ask them about their past and don't listen. In that case, he will be also happy and you will be also happy. And if you start listening to him, then you will become miserable. These are the uh, practical hints of spiritual life. <laughs> so that old man started. I was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi Vinoba Bhave when I was in my first year of college. And I was so inspired, I left everything. And I surrendered at their feet. They said, go to the northeast India and serve the people there, the tribal people, and win over their hearts. For last 55 years, I have been working there day and night. I have built up a huge institution for them. And then slowly the bitterness started coming. But the same people for whom I have converted my blood and uh, uh, sweat into that beautiful institution, they want to kill me. They are after my life. And therefore I had to come to Calcutta. When he was telling like this thing, in between he said, this world is like biting his teeth with bitterness. This world is like a dog's tail. It can't be improved. You do anything for them, they are most useless people. When he became bitter, then I was thinking, let me give him a little sugar. So I told him, I said, sir, the beauty of the dog is because of the crooked tail. Imagine a dog with a tail like a dish antenna. Will it look beautiful? This world is beautiful as it is. If we want to improve upon the world and then introduce beauty, then you are the wrong way. Now why he became so bitter? Because I have done so much for them. Who asked you? Be very attentive. Karma will give you frustration if you have this notion. I am doing some for somebody something. Please remember, nobody needs us in this world. I come here to talk in front of you. I am 100% sure none of you need my talk. Then why I am talking? It is my need. So when I talk to you, the first person to listen is me. 
If I cannot change because of my words, will you ever change? Friends, anything that we do in life, it is our need. The world doesn't need us. When we were not in this world, there was nothing lacking. When we will leave this world, there will be no lacuna. If you don't trust me, leave. <laughs> so when our earlier absence and the posterior absence makes no difference, the present is equally, we are most unwanted furniture in this world. But what an arrogance. I have done this thing, I have done that thing, I have done this thing, Ram, Ram, Ram. With this understanding, when we lead our life, that every action is an expression of joy, you are in the present. And then you discover many subtle things which are not written in the books. We learn from our experiences. See, friends, it's very simple, it is not difficult. No one example I'll tell you. Suppose I tell you one joke, see, uh, in a school, the teacher said, children, today you have to write a story, short story, not a long one, and the story must end in a happy mode, not a miserable one, okay? Now who your writes first will read his story. So the children started writing write one or two lines and throw the paper again, right like that. And one child wrote and sat like this. So the teacher said, hey, what about you? Ma'am, you told, I have written the story. Story is over. Really? Yes. So she stopped everybody. Now let us listen his story. He wrote, there was a man and a woman, first line, second line. They were standing back to back. Third line, they started walking. Last line, thereafter they lived happily. <laughs> Simple. Now again I will tell you the same story. There was a man and a woman. They were standing back to back. And they started walking. And thereafter they lived happily. Will you enjoy it? Be attentive. When the same joke does not make you second time happy. Why the same misery makes you miserable again and again? Think. But we take the same old thing. See, when I was young, who cares, yaar? Learn these secrets of mind. See, friends. When the same joke cannot make us happy again and again, why should the same misery make us miserable again and again? See, in this manner, real spiritual life begins when we start learning from our experiences. Our every experience is our guru. Don't go for guru shopping here and there. There was one person from uh, USA. He phoned me. Swamiji, I am coming to India for two weeks. And I had to get a guru. Can you give me some addresses where gurus are available? I said, you go to Haridwar Rishikesh. There are guru malls. <laughs> go for guru shopping. See, friends. Real Guru is our own experience. If we cannot learn from our experience, even God cannot teach us. We may glorify Krishna Vande Jagat Guru. Bhagwan Krishna is Jagat Guru. People write before their name Jagat Guru. See? If Bhagwan Krishna was Jagat Guru, why he was not able to teach Duryodhana, Dushyasana, Dhritarashtra? Why he failed? Because in the relationship of Guru and Shishya, it is the disciple who is important and valuable, not the Guru. 
So we would carry the Guru on the head and suffer silently. No friends. Guru is our ability to learn from our experiences of life. Then every experience is our Guru. See friends, have we not done this in our life? In our childhood, sometime we touched the fire and we got burnt. We learned from that. And when we learn from that, we don't hate fire. Because we learned. In the same manner, when we start learning from every passing experience of our life, with every additional experience, we will grow wise. And if we don't learn from our experiences of life, we will continue to be dumb as we are. And in this manner, this process of learning slowly brings us out of body identification and the notion that we are a soul in the body. There is but one reality expressing through many gadgets. Like one electricity expressing through the mic, amplification. Expressing through the bulb, light. Expressing through the fan, a magnetic field. Electricity is the same. Be attentive. In the same manner, one mind expressing through the eyes, vision. The same mind expressing through the ears, hearing ability. The same mind expressing through the nose, poking ability. Think. Further, the same consciousness expressing through the man's body, beard grows. The same consciousness expressed through the cow's body, the milk comes out. The same conscious reality expressing through a cobra, venom comes out. Does it mean it is a venomous reality? It is a milking reality or it is a masculine reality? Our attention must go to the source. Like one man with the gadget of his father, he is called as a son. The same man with the gadget of his wife, he is called as a husband. The same man with the gadget of his own son, he is called as a father. Has he become three? In the same manner, one absolute reality with the conditioning of the names and the forms, it is called as the world. The same reality with the conditioning of the Panchakoshas is called as the Jiva. The same reality with the conditioning of the Maya, the infinite potentiality is called as Ishvara. Because of this three conditioning, he is referred in three ways, but he is one. That is our essential nature. Kshetradnyam chapi maam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata Bhagavan Krishna tells to Arjun, Arjun, don't have this notion that there is one body separate from body to body, but there is one reality expressing in and through everything. See, friends, this is the only meaning of spiritual life. All others are only the means, and means are those which are to be dropped. You don't carry the means throughout life. See? In this manner, we start from the periphery and reach the center. And this is done through wisdom. Not mechanically. Anything you do mechanically, you will lose charm. See? The sense objects they cover the sense organs. The sense organs, they cover the mind. The mind covers the conscious reality that we are. So what is the spiritual practice? Discard the dependence on the worldly objects. Be not the slave to the sense organs. Transcend the mind. And there you are. This journey from the periphery to the center is the spiritual life. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ